Hey everybody, Darren Burrows here. Today I want to explain to you why you may be having a hard time finding a good contractor. People reach out to me on a regular basis asking me if I can be the general contractor on their project and I always answer the same way. I don't work for anybody else at this point. I only work on my own projects. And even on my own projects, I'm taking a step back from the job site and I'm actually just managing my projects instead of being involved in the day-to-day -day renovations. The follow-up question that I get then is how do I find a good contractor? And the answer is easy. You know, you just ask your friends and family and colleagues for referrals. You check their references. You make sure they're licensed and have insurance. They're educated and they have experience in the types of renovations that you want done on your property. You meet with contractors, you get three to five quotes and you choose one. It's simple, right? But inevitably somebody comes back to me and says, I did all that and I still can't find a good contractor. What am I doing wrong? I'll usually take a little bit of a pause and say, maybe the problem's not the contractor, maybe the problem's you. It's so awkward. Here's the thing, maybe you did hire a bad contractor, or maybe a friend had a good experience with a the contractor, they recommended them to you, but you didn't have the same experience as your friend. The reality is there are a lot of bad contractors out there, but there are also a lot of great contractors out there. And sometimes the issue that I see is not with the contractor, but it's with us as investors. So let me explain my three reasons why you may be having a hard time finding a good contractor. This is not all doom and gloom because I do wanna offer you some tips at the end of this video on how you can find a good contractor. Before we get into it, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell to let you know when new videos are coming out. Feel free to leave comments and questions below for me and it's always appreciated when you can hit that like button to satisfy the YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first reason why you may be having a hard time finding a good contractor is your expectations may be too high. As investors, we are looking for a unique combination of qualities when it comes to hiring contractors. We want our contractors to be able to start our projects on short notice, be fast and efficient, always be available to us, be punctual, reliable, and stay on schedule, provide design ideas to help improve our projects, problem solve and think outside the box, provide professional invoices and quotes, have proper licensing and insurance, give the highest quality work at rock bottom prices. Now you can see why this may not always work because, well, this doesn't exist. In renovation, there are three elements, price, quality, and time. You can get two out of three of these elements, but you can never get all three. You can get a low price and it can be done fast, but the quality will suffer. You can get high quality and it can be done quickly, but it's gonna cost you a lot more. And finally, you can get a low cost and good quality, but maybe your timeline will suffer because your contractor is fitting you in between other jobs that they've got going on at the same time. So as an investor, we have to choose the two that are most important to us and hire a contractor based on your needs. The second reason you may be having a hard time finding a good contractor is you don't have a very good plan. I've seen situations where people don't know exactly what they want and they're asking the contractor for their recommendations based on their experience. This can often work out well because the contractor has years of experience of what works and what does not work. But this can sometimes backfire because sometimes the contractors have vision and they can't show that vision to the client until the project is done. And at that time, the client may not be satisfied with the final product and this is where there are problems. This often results in projects having to be completed over again or in some cases, contractors are fired and a new contractor is brought in to finish up the project. I can't tell you how many job sites I've been on where a client of mine has had one vision in the beginning and changed their mind many times throughout the process. Change is a part of renovation, there's no question about it. But the more prepared clients are with the vision that they have going in, the easier it is for me as a contractor to be able to execute their vision. Another situation that presents itself is sometimes people don't know how to lay out space very well. Let me give you an example of that. I once did a renovation for a client and in their bathroom that was going to serve the entire house and they had four people in their family, they had space for a five foot vanity and yet they chose a two foot vanity because they liked the style of that one better. I was adamant that they should be putting in the largest vanity they possibly could for the space and even trying to get a double sink in there because they only had that one bathroom to service the house. They ended up putting in the smaller vanity. I got a call from them six months later to come back, remove the vanity and put in the original one that I had recommended. So it's really important that you choose products that fit for the space that you're working with. And the other part of planning is knowing exactly where your services are to keep your costs low. If I have to move a bathroom from one side of the house completely over to the other side, there's a lot of plumbing that needs to be redone and there could be a lot of things affected by that. So my recommendation is always to try to use the areas that you have and maximize the space with all of the services such as plumbing, electrical, and HVAC are there with the minimum amount of changes that you can get away with and ultimately ending up with the product that you want. 
Here's the flip side of that coin, and that is that some people plan too much and want to be too involved in every step of the renovation. Here's the reality. Good contractors always have more than enough business coming in. So if they think you're a nightmare client, they're either going to quote the job really high so they can build in the pain in the ass factor, or they're simply going to tell you that they're not available or they're not interested in taking on the project. One of the things I want to caution you on is asking a contractor to provide you with a super detailed quote. What I mean by that is breaking out every job that needs to be done in your project on a line by line basis. And sometimes the ask is to separate the cost and the labor so that the clients can take a look at that. In my experience, the reason that they want to do that is they want to be able to nitpick every single line item to see if they can lower the price somehow. And that's a red flag for me as a contractor and I will often not want to take on that client. Having said that, you do want to make sure you have a detailed scope of work document that you sign with the contractor. That's going to lay out what the services that they are going to provide for you and what your expectation is in terms of payment. But as long as you feel there's enough detail in that contract to make you feel comfortable moving forward and their payment terms meet your expectations, that's all I'm really hoping for when it comes to that scope of work document. And the third reason why you may be having a hard time finding a good contractor is you're always taking the lowest bid. Contracting is a service and not a product. So as the saying goes, you get what you pay for when it comes to contractors. Having said that, you don't want to overpay for a project. So how is it that we get the best price for the quality of service that we need? The best way to do this is you always want to compare price to service. This is why I always like to get three to five quotes on a project and that way I can compare similar services and evaluate based on price. If you're only getting three quotes, you'll really have to compare services on those three quotes. If you're getting five quotes, you can eliminate the lowest price quote and the highest price quote and look at the three in the middle and make sure they're comparing similar services. If you're not super familiar with these services, what I've done in the past is I've taken one of the quotes and I've sent it to the other contractor who's bid on the project. Then I ask them for their feedback on what differs between their quote and the quote that I'm sending them. You have to keep in mind that the contractor you sent that quote to is probably going to pick apart the other contractor's quote, but it also gives them an opportunity to sell you on their customer service. And I always use it as an evaluating tool to see how that contractor reacts to that situation, because that will be telling as we move forward with the renovation project, if I choose that contractor. There's one more element here when it comes to accepting the lowest bid, and that's that some contractors will quote the job on cost plus materials. So the way that that works is they'll take their material costs and show those to you. They'll be very transparent with that. And they'll also then add their hourly wage on top. As a contractor later on in my business, this is the only way that I would operate because it was too difficult for me to quote a project, especially in older century homes in the Toronto area, because I never knew what I was going to get when I pulled the walls down or I ripped the floors up. So I knew if I was quoting cost plus materials, if I needed to buy an extra sheet of plywood because that was going to be the best for the renovation project, I just did that and it was transparent with the homeowners. The one thing you have to be careful of though with the contractor who's doing cost plus materials is you want to make sure that they're reliable and that they're going to work hard when they are on site. But if they are someone who you trust and does really good work, this can be a more effective way of getting a better quality renovation. So now that we've gone through all the things you don't want to do to scare off your contractors, let's go through the things you can do in order to be able to find a good contractor. I still think it's most effective to ask for referrals from friends, family, and colleagues of contractors that they've worked with that they've had a good experience. That's a good starting point. The other thing you can do is you can go online, you can look at Google reviews, you can go on sites like homestars.com and look at other reviews that homeowners have left for contractors and similar services. Just be aware that some companies on those websites hire third-party companies to boost their rating by putting in fake reviews. The other thing you can do to find good contractors is look for a sign. Not from God, but on a lawn. If you're walking in your neighborhood and you see a project that seems to be going on time, the job site is clean and the renovation looks good, often contractors will leave their business sign on the front lawn. You can always give them a call or at least take a picture of it for later on when you may need a contractor. Ask good tradespeople who they like to work with as a contractor. When I find a good plumber or electrician, I ask them who their favorite contractors are to work for, and that can be a great recommendation. Visit your local specialty supply center to find qualified contractors. For instance, go to a local plumbing supply store and ask them if they'll give you a recommendation on a plumber you might be able to use. Sometimes they'll give you a recommendation and sometimes they won't. It really depends on your local supply store. Instead of asking a contractor to provide you with three references, I prefer to ask them for references of the last three jobs they've completed. This tells me a couple things. If they haven't done a project in a couple months, they may not be the greatest contractor. 
And the other thing is this is their most recent client. So if they've had a good experience with that contractor, they're gonna highly recommend them. As opposed to asking for three references, of course, the contractor like your tenant is gonna give you the three best references that they have. Don't always assume that the contractor who shows up first to quote the job is gonna give you the best customer service. In the past, I've seen contractors who show up very quickly within 24 hours sometimes, give me the highest quote I ever receive on a job. They're hoping that getting there first and providing a quote, the customer will choose them before they even decide to go with another contractor. And this can put you in a situation where you can grossly overpay for a project based on the fact that the contractor just showed up quickly. And finally, when looking at your decision on how you wanna hire a contractor, I look at things like how they communicate with me. Do they use email and text? And if so, that's a record that you have that you can use if something goes wrong. Or do they prefer to always pick up the phone and call you, they always wanna to talk to you in person. That's a red flag for me sometimes because that may be a contractor who doesn't wanna have anything on paper because it's harder to come after them if something goes wrong. I also go with my gut instinct. And I often try to find a contractor who I get along with, who I enjoy communicating and talking to, and who I wanna have around my job site and I think is gonna do a good job. I know that one is subjective and it's not going to work every single time, but it has served me well over my years in hiring contractors. So when it comes to working with good contractors, you may have to lower your expectations, come in with a really good plan, and make sure you don't always accept the lowest bid. I think you may start to see some success in working with contractors, and this will really help build your real estate investing business because we need good contractors on our team in order to be able to move our businesses forward. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, if you don't mind, hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.